If you love Korean barbecue, you came to the right place today. I'm gonna show you how to make restaurant style Korean beef short ribs barbecue, wangalbi. I'm also gonna show you how to fillet your beef short ribs so that it looks just like how it's served at a Korean barbecue restaurant without having to pay top dollars. Last time I went, it was $99 per serving of this wangalbi. I almost like fainted, but I didn't. And I'm also gonna show you how to make this easy peasy kalbi marinade that is so delicious. Make sure to watch to the end because I'm gonna show you how to make the lettuce wrap, sangchu sam, which is a must when you have Korean barbecue. 오늘의 레시피, 전문집처럼 아주 맛있는 양념 왕갈비 만들기. 오늘도 여러분들과 영어를 함께 하겠습니다. 간이 딱 맞고 입안에서 녹습니다. I just said the seasoning is just perfectly balanced, like a little bit of garlickiness and salty taste and the sugary taste. And it just like literally dissipates and melts in my mouth. So yummy. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. The ingredient list is also available in the description box below. So let's first start with making our kalbi marinade. So we need half a cup of Yangjo ganjang. So that is your Korean all-purpose soy sauce. Then we need two tablespoons of brown sugar. And two. And one tablespoon of finely minced garlic. Always, always use freshly chopped garlic. Never the ones that come pre-chopped in a jar. We have one tablespoon of white onion puree using a microplane. You could do it that way. And two tablespoons of Korean pear puree. Again, using a microplane. If you can't get Korean pear, use any pear that is sweet and ripe. And if you also have a food processor, you could add the onions, garlic, and the pear and puree it that way. One eighth cup of midim, that's Korean cooking wine. If you can't have alcohol, just skip this part. One eighth cup of sesame oil. So only use the finest sesame oil that you can buy. Two scallions, finely minced. Half a teaspoon of salt. Now this is optional. This is 소고기 다시다, beef 다시다. If you want your kalbi to taste restaurant style good, you wanna add half a tablespoon or MSG. And we need about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And lastly, we need half a cup of water. Then I want you to mix everything up until everything is dissolved. OMG, it's starting to smell so, so delicious. So it's like I'm getting hungry thinking about this. All right, so let's have a quick taste test. I just blew on it. <laughs> I don't know why. It's a habit. Mm. At this point, it shouldn't taste too salty, but it should be salty enough so that you like that salty preference. But what is really important is it shouldn't taste sweet. If you like it sweeter, add more brown sugar. The original way of having Korean barbecue is not on the sweet side. But unfortunately, many, many Korean restaurants here in the States, they make all their marinades extra sweet now and they do that to cater to our non-Korean friends. And I think our non-Korean friends would like it the way Koreans like it, not that sweet. But again, it's up to you. Here is our star ingredient, beef short ribs. So these are called tonggalbi or jjimgalbi when you go to the Korean market. But basically you wanna buy the beef short ribs with the thickest, thickest cushion of meat on top of the bone. These are on the expensive side. So you could also make LA kalbi. It's a bit more affordable because the way they cut it, but it could be just as delicious. So if you want to make that, you could check out my video on that LA kalbi recipe, which will be linked over here and also in the description box below. For our recipe today, we are using about three pounds of beef short ribs. You always want to look for this beautiful marbling Oh, that's gonna be good when you grill it. Our first cut is gonna be in between where the bones are, right here down the middle. Do the same for all of them, right here down the middle. 
Now, once you cut all the pieces like so, what I want you to do is pick the thickest one because this is our first cut and I want you to take chopsticks with the thick part at this end, thin parts over here. And I want you to line it up so that the bone that's exposed is facing the chopstick. If you're right-handed, you want the bone to be on this side. And then you just go down along the side of the bone, the chopsticks, it's preventing my knife from going any further. So that's what it's for. Split this open and then with your knife, go down the side and go down as far as you can go. Then you wanna take your hand and press down like this and take your knife and just go along the top of the chopstick. So go as low as you can go where you're catching the chopstick and then you go across, not all the way through. Then you lift and move this down again. And then you do the same thing. Then you use your palm to kind of press down the meat and then you go sideways following the chopstick as your guide. Just don't go all the way through. Then you wanna kind of open it a little bit further. What you could do at this point is just leave it as is, or you could score it like that. Some people do this so that the marinade seeps in more to the meat of the beef. And you wanna always score it the other way as well. Now this one is about to separate because there's so much fat at the end here and the fat doesn't really hold on well. So if it separates, it's totally fine. So I'm also gonna show you how to do this without the chopsticks. Same thing, you wanna have it upright, exposed part of the bone is facing away from you, and you wanna take your knife and go along the side of your bone, right here. Okay, once you get here, you just open it gently, and then you wanna cut at this angle, and then slide down like that. So you're basically filleting the meat. Then use this hand to kind of hold it in place and then you take your knife and you slide it. So you're just cutting along the bottom of the meat, like so, and don't cut it all the way. Then same thing from here, from here, you hold this down like this and you go across slowly. So here is our beef short ribs that we filleted so that it's holding its shape like this. You wanna roll this up like this. So it looks pretty like that. And just keep on going. Look at that. Here's a stack of our beautifully filleted beef short ribs all rolled up. So cozy and delicious looking. <laughs> our filleted beef are gonna go take a nap in our beautiful and delicious smelling carby marinade. So what you wanna do is soak it. Oh, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Then you roll it up and then you stack it on the side. Oh yeah, it smells so good in my kitchen. Look at our beautiful kalbi filet just resting in this delicious kalbi marinade. Using a clean paper towel, I want you to clean the interior wall of our bowl. Then we're gonna put plastic wrap on it. Of course, you could also store it in a airtight container too. Seal it tight, like so. How long to marinate our kalbi? Well, that is totally up to your preference. If you like your steaks with minimal seasoning and you really savor the taste of the natural, yummy taste of the beef, I would just let this sit on your kitchen counter for one hour and then grill it. But if you like your curry barbecue to taste a bit more you know, seasoned and marinated, it's so delicious, I would keep it in the fridge for 48 hours. I wouldn't go beyond 48 hours because the marinade will start breaking down the meat and we don't want that. I made another batch. So this one's been sitting in the fridge for two days. Already, ah, kalbi aromatherapy. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that cool? So you can make this at home and impress your family and friends. So let's get these guys on the grill and start eating. Some of you do not have outdoor grills. So in that case, you could also cook this in your oven. So set it to broil, preheat it, and make sure your top shelf is placed at the highest it can go. So this cooks right under the fire and you wanna cook both sides until it has that dark chocolatey color to it. Oh, sorry, I'm gulping again. Yeah, you know this is gonna be good. Always make sure that your grill is 
piping hot before you add the meat. It should always make this sizzling sound once the meat hits the grill. All right, here's our beautiful karabi. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, that's such a lovely sound, isn't it? <laughs> Unroll it here, pick it up by the bone like that. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Your favorite person gets this one. <laughs> Look at that. I will cook it the way you like your steaks, you know? Don't overcook it, obviously. Let's come back to it in about two, three minutes and check. Here I have some trumpet mushroom that I sliced. And here I have a little bit of the kalbi marinade left over. So I would add that to there. I would do a gentle, light coating of our I'd be marinade like that. And then I would add these guys to the grill and eat it together. So it's been about two minutes. So let's take a look. Ooh, don't you love that sound? Oh yeah. This is what you want to look for. <gasps> you see that chocolate brown color? Oh yeah. So this is ready to be flipped. Oh, this too. Look at that. That's the color that we want. Oh, that's the color that we want. If the color looks like this, flip everything over. That stuff is golden. My boys fight over that. Flip everything over and just cook it for another two, three minutes on high heat until you have that same exact milk chocolate dark color to your meat like that. After I flip my meat over, this is when I would add my trumpet mushroom. And there, we're gonna put it in the back so it gets a nice grill mark. So these guys are done. So we're gonna take them off the grill and eat them right away when it's hot. <laughs> My neighbors are like, what is that smell? <laughs> it's time to cut up our beautiful kalbi right here so we could make our samchusam. After you cut everything, you have to have to taste it, right? I mean, the chef always gets to eat first, I say, you know, always. Mm. Uh, I just said the seasoning is just perfectly balanced, like a little bit of garlickiness and salty taste and the sugary taste, you can't even really like taste it. Try it that way first before you add more sugar. And it just like literally dissipates and melts in my mouth. So yummy. <laughs> That. It's like a little red in the middle, which I love. And of course, you know, you just have it with a spoonful of rice and then you add your kimchi on top together like that. And life just gets instantly better that way. And here you have it. Warm Korean rice with our perfectly cooked kalbi and a small piece of kimchi. <laughs> Open your mouth and feed you. Here we have samjang, which is a condiment that is a must when you have Korean barbecue. So it's made with gochujang and tenjang and other seasonings. So I have a video recipe for this, so you could check it out. And the other item you must have is pamuchim. So I add other ingredients to it to make it extra delicious. So I have a recipe for this too, if you wanna check it out. Here is green leaf lettuce. We wanna take the root end off like that and then eat it. To this, we're gonna add just a small amount of rice. So we're making it so that everything is bite-sized. You want to put this whole thing in your mouth at once. One beautiful piece of our kalbi right here. Then take a little dollop of our samjang. Ooh, does that look good or what? <laughs> then you pick up a little bit of your pamuchim like that and you kind of squish it together. Fold this over like that and then you fold the sides in like that and like that. You wrap it tight and compact so that this goes into your mouth all at once, like that. So a lot of friends make tacos with it where they make like multiple bite sizes. You're not supposed to do that because you want to put everything in your mouth all at once so you could taste all the delicious ingredients together at once. Bon appetit everyone. One bite. It's a little bit big today, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. One bite, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs>
all the ingredients together is like perfection. It's so, so yummy. <laughs> if you've never had it this way, you're missing out. So make it at home. This you do not want to waste. This is like true Korean barbecue lovers delight. You want to eat the membrane and everything on it. If you love Korean barbecue and you want to learn more, make sure to go to youtube.com slash modern pepper, click on that playlist tab and select Korean barbecue recipes and I will see you there. I want to thank you for watching today and if you enjoyed watching today's video, as always, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you will click on that thumbs up icon. Doing so supports my channel tremendously, so I want to thank you in advance and make sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe so we can make more Korean dishes together. 여러분 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼과 구독 버튼도 눌러주세요. 다음 영상에서 꼭 뵙겠습니다. 감사합니다. All right, folks, I will see you in one of the videos you see right here.